Today, we'll be performing examination of the neck and I'll be walking you through each of its steps. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Shahzeb. May I know your name, please? All right, Ahmed. For today's examination, I'll examine your neck and I'll need exposure of your entire neck, including your shoulder bones. Is that okay with you? Yeah. I'll use my hands and a stethoscope as well. If you feel any pain or discomfort during the procedure, you can let me know. Shall we begin? Yeah. Okay. We will begin with inspecting the neck on all sides to look for any abnormal swelling, any pulsatile masses or any surgical scar marks or pigmentation changes. We will look at all sides of the neck. Can you turn to that side for me and now to this side? We also need to do two special tests for swellings in the neck that are the tongue protrusion test and solving test. Can you protrude your tongue out for me? If a swelling moves on protrusion of the tongue, it means it is attached to the hyoid bone, most likely a thyroglossal cyst. Can you swallow a sip of water for me now? A swelling that moves with swallowing or deglutition is indicative of a thyroid. So now we'll move on to palpation. Before palpation of the neck, we need to ask if their patient has pain at any site. Do you have pain anywhere in your neck? The ideal way of palpation is palpating from behind, but some components can be done anteriorly as well. We need to first locate the location of the thyroid gland. This is done by using a finger running down the midline. We will run it down and we will assess for a prominence. The first prominence that we feel is the Adam's apple or the thyroid cartilage. We will move further down from it and we will face a depression. This depression is the cricothyroid membrane. Further down is the cricoid cartilage and right below it lies the isthmus of the thyroid gland. This is a common confusion among students as they palpate the thyroid much higher. But the ideal palpation should be here. So now we can palpate both lobes of the thyroid gland anteriorly as well. If you are unable to palpate it, we can keep one hand steady and push from the other side to palpate the lobe. We'll do the same for the other side. During palpation, we can ask the patient to swallow as well to assess for movement. Can you swallow? If the lobes are prominent, they will be felt on palpation. Once this is done, we can now move to posterior. We will now palpate the neck from behind. For palpation of the neck from behind, we will follow the same protocol and trace the origin of the thyroid gland. Once we have done that, we will palpate for both lobes. Can you swallow for me? And assess for movement with swallowing. We'll also look for any nodules, any consistency, and for enlargement of the thyroid. Once that is done, we can now ask the patient to relax themselves and flex their neck for assessment of the lymph nodes. We'll now palpate the lymph nodes of the patient, starting with submint. Can you flex your neck slightly for me? Moving to some mandibular, the parotid, preauricular, postauricular, jugulodigastric nodes, and then the anterior cervical chain. Similarly, the posterior cervical chain, and finally the occipital nodes on the back. We can also assess for the supraclavicular nodes by asking the patient to shrug as you push deep inside the supraclavicular fossa. Can you shrug for me? Thank you. Shrug it down. That completes the lymph node examination. To check for tracheal deviation due to an enlarged thyroid mass, we use the three finger method. We put two of our fingers on the edges of the clavicles and use the middle finger to assess downward medial location of the trachea. We can also assess the sides, looking if we can go beneath, between the trachea and the sternocleidomastoid. If you are able to do so, the trachea is midline. We can also assess for this cricosternal distance in this and a tracheal tug by asking the patient to inspire. Can you inspire? 
if your finger is pulled inside and it causes a tug, this is a positive tracheal tug. In cases of enlarged thyroid, we need to check for a thyroid brui. This is done with the bell of a stethoscope, placing it right over the isthmus and also over the lobes. One final assessment that we need to do is presence of a retrosternal goiter. To assess that, we percuss the retrosternal region. If the percussion note is resonant, which is normal, it indicates a normal thyroid gland and lack of retrosternal extension. That's it. For complete examination of the neck, we also need to assess a lump for all of its characteristics if it is present, just like we do for lumps anywhere else in the body. For lump assessment, the characteristics that we are usually looking at are the size, the site, the shape, the consistency, compressibility, transillumination, and its mobility along the planes, and along with the musculature as well. We can also assess for the overlying skin changes. Thank you. This completes our neck examination. Thank you, Lost, for your cooperation.